into the game with Atlas Spawn and Quickshot. Thank you very much, Shox, and welcome to the Casted S. We're here to get into the grand final, this best of five series. And of course, if you look back yesterday, Turkey looking incredibly strong. But after Kira's victory, you have to think that the CAS region are on cloud nine. Yeah, they certainly would have to be, and you have to put a lot of, I guess, emphasis on their mid laner now. I'm expecting Crystal to just send a message, like, first five minutes <laughs> of the game, pick up Rexai, get in his lane, just shut down the confidence a little bit, because you're exactly right, he'll be feeling pretty good. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out, because on the other side, Dimashka, he's had a trend and a tendency towards that Gragas. And there's actually some differences in all of the roles with the exception of top lane. The top lane is fairly shared between these two teams, but the junglers, the mids, ADCs, are very, very different. So I'm quite excited to see what the priorities are as far as picks and bans. I actually yeah. find that really interesting as well, considering the fact that, you know, Holy Phoenix going towards the Misfortunes, the Lucians, whereas you've got Lex, he wants to play Vayne and the Tristana. It seems like, yeah, there are a lot of variations to these teams. Yeah, well, it's a whole stylistic thing together, like the CIS region is still playing like this is a late game team fighting patch. And that's why Gragas is still such a great pick because Dimashka can start up so many team fights for them. On the other side, Turkey, they really have a good understanding of how to win in the early game. Well, we are into champion select, ladies and gentlemen. Anivia is going to be the first ban and Bard, fantastic ban there from the CIS region. Dumbledore, brilliant on that champion. Lulu to follow there for the TCL. And Soldier not going to be playing Jax, but we're looking Fiora's at the top still lane. Up. We're thinking Fiora, right? Fiora's still up. Rumble's still up there as well on the side of the Turkish squad. Thulger's had some pretty impressive performances. But Smurf has always got the option to pull out the Malphite. The irony would be, if the Malphite came out, that was how Turkey beat the CIS squad during the round robin stage. CIS had a lead. They were in the advantageous position. But they were all invested in this Lulu-Tristana combo. Thulger caught them out. And that was how the CIS team lost. So. Malphite taken away to deny that, Atlas. Yeah, it could actually mean that they're going for some sort of Fiora first pick here. Deny it away from Smurf and give it to Thaldren, who showed that even if he's building Nationalist Tooths, still able to do work <laughs> on that champion. Or Nationalist Teeth? Well, Not entirely sure. Te I guess the plural would be Teeth, but I think Elise might be a consideration here. Or yeah, not. Definitely has to be a jungle pickup right now. Although, you know, you're having a look at it. Elise, very high priority. Kindra, very high priority. We have already talked about Dimashka's Gragas, so there is a lot on the board, right? Uh, I'm looking at Miss Fortune, maybe, for Holy Phoenix. No, I don't believe so that. So many power picks right now. Well, I'm definitely yeah. looking at the jungle as well, Spawn. I think that, you know, the Elise could be picked up, but Dimashke on the Gragas, whereas Crystal, there he is, going to pick up that Elise. Yeah, and this, I, I feel like CIS don't really mind about this. No. So Crystal's going to have to get so much work done in the early game to really start snowballing it for it to impact the way that they want to still play team fights. And Gragas should be able to out team fight Elise as the game progresses. Yeah, hopefully, Dimashka gets the opportunity. And you look at some of the other picks as well. As we mentioned, some of the differences Holy Phoenix and Dumbledore, when they haven't got their bard, um, have somewhat leaned back to the Morgana misfortune. Oh my goodness. So I wonder if that's going to rise in popularity because MF's not banned either. Tom Kench is available, and Demonko showed that he is exceptional at that champion. No, I completely disagree. Do not pick Tom Kench here. If you pick Tom Kench into the Turkish bottom lane, this game will not last 15 minutes, let alone the 10, 20 minute surrender timing. They're just Ooh. so aggressive down there. They play Lucian, they play Misfortune, they play only ranged supports. Tom Kench is literally a sitting duck, frog, catfish thing. Sitting catfish, if there yeah. were a time to lane swap and get away from that, Maybe now that we're in the finals... They're going to chase him around the map. This is going to... This will be painful. I, I promise you this will be painful. Well, well, we'll you see. promised it. We have to keep him on track here, Atlas. Yeah, Me exactly. Measure how uh, correct Sport turns a, a out to be. There'll be a dial down the bottom of the screen for you, ladies and gentlemen. No, they won't, but we'll, we'll keep track. And the thing is, if you look at picks and bands so far, there's no real surprises. Everything that has been played throughout the group stage, yeah. the champions that have excelled for both Turkey and CIS are being locked in. Personally, I would be expecting the M of Morgana, but Holy Phoenix has played the Lucian as well, something we've not really seen from Lex. He's been trending towards the Vayne in the most recent games, so there's options here for both. And this is what I was worried about. Looking at the Turkish lineup coming into against Brazil, Brazil were trending further and further towards that late game style that the CIS has been picking up just because of the prevalence of Anivia coming into the meta, Victor really coming back strong for this tournament in particular, and Turkey 100% had their number in that. This is a very similar pick band phase so far. Yeah. For the side of Turkey though, with the Janna lock in and the Irelia, that is a denial because we've seen the Irelia played from Smurf in the top lane. Thaldrin will get his hands on that carry. With the Fiora band away, Smurf's gonna find an alternative. Um, 
to what he's going to run. It's going to make life a little more challenging. And all of a sudden, Lucian Misfortune just become even more powerful. The added shield from the eye, uh, the added AD from the Eye of the Storm shield is just going to mean that the double ups of piercing lights coming off the creep wave going to hurt even further. As we said, Demonko not the highest mobile champion right now. Apart from, you know, when he's on the old Abyssal Voyage. But Lex, first time on the Lucian here, not going towards the vein, not going towards that Tristana and deciding instead to go for this sort of mid-game, mid-range AD carry. Holy Phoenix now denied one of his big picks, but Misfortune's already there. I don't think that's terrible when you look at the rest of the team comp. Because for CIS, they've got quite a lot of scaling. You know, they want Hecarim to get a, you know, mid to late. They want Gragas mid to late. Lucian's better early to mid with a decent late. And you look at Elise and Irelia, they're early to mid. They want to go hard, they want to go early. And Turkey's wins, as Stress had mentioned on the desk, seven minutes faster than CIS, because CIS are like very dependent on Baron. They play for those late game, they play for the Baron buff, and then they push lanes. Turkey are gonna say, screw that, win lane, win game, go home with uh, bragging rights from 5v5. Yeah, they certainly are, but Naru once again looking at a mid Irelia, because that is Thaldrin's rumble being hovered and potentially a Kog'Maw, which I'm going to, I'm going to jump yeah. on the Kog'Maw hype train right now. Yeah. I think it's a really good pick. Every single game I saw it in, he had done at least 16,000 damage more than anyone else on the map. He was able to position relatively well. You just need people that are also threats. The thing about Kog'Maw, you run him in two types of uh, team comps, either protect the Kog'Maw, where no one can get to him, or you just run that many threats that if you prioritize the Kog'Maw, the rest of the team can clean up. And right now, it looks like that is a very good team comp for the Turkish lineup. You're hovering at Yasuo. Don't know about that one into the Aurelia, but I do like what you're saying, and I do like the mind games that the Turkish side are playing here as well with Soldrin on that rumble. And I just want to add, Radier actually tweeted out after all of the flack that he got for the, the Kog'Maw, saying that it's still broken. He still thinks that this Rageblade Kog'Maw is ridiculous and you're right did so much damage just didn't happen to win we'll see if that works out because holy phoenix and dumbledore will be the cog janet we know they'll be going up against the lucian tom kench if they go head to head so the potential of holy phoenix planting himself down and then just spitting for days with the janna shield i think is actually very very scary but positioning and then targets uh, you know when he decides to throw down that w if he can combine it with a dumbledore uh, knock up from that howling gale Lex could be in trouble, but then again, Demonk is just going to swallow him and walk away. Yeah, so. but this is the thing. So they, I, I will take it back. This game will go for a little bit longer now just because the Turkish lineup hasn't picked their normal bottom lane. But you can't force a Kog'Maw off farm. There's no way he's going to be forced out of this lane. It's just going to be a farm fest as it scales up. Lucian's great at one, two, and three items, but Kog'Maw's great at six items, <laughs> even if it goes late game. <laughs> well, now that you can build a Rage Blade, I mean, that's basically all you need. He's great at one item now. Uh, even Raider, you what saw was in the, the bottom what lane, was the was like crazy. Rage Blade into Blade of the Rune King. Into Hurricane. Into Hurricane. Yeah. Max out, five attack speed. Oof. I mean, if he gets there. If That's he gets there. But, like, Gragas can get to him. Hecarim can get to him. You can deliver a Victor to the back line with Tom Kench. There's tools here for CIS. Victor's on the back line. We're in some trouble here. <laughs> We're in for a much more interesting game than any of us expected. Naru, of course, on that Aurelia is undefeated. I believe this was the matchup that he took it into last time as well. If I remember, assassinating people under turrets. I will double check for you. It was an Aurelia mid against CIS into the Lulu of Kira. It did not go well early because it was up to Thaldrin's Malphite in the river, catching Lex and Kira out. That was the game-changing play for Turkey in the group stage. Yeah, it doesn't quite have the engage, but we are on to Summoner's Rift, ladies and gentlemen, here at IWCA. The best of five grand final between Turkey and the CIS region has begun. Dumbledore heading out of the base. Sad to not see his bard, but respect Ban. I do like it. And I like what Naru has done here. Kira, as we said, the off the back of the 1v1 win. victory would be super hyped. He's taking a mid, pretty much assassin, into the middle lane. And he's gonna look to get aggressive early. First time we're seeing the Janna at IWCA in the finals. Holy Phoenix pulls out Kog'Maw for the first time and he goes for Cull. Now, I'm not a massive wow. fan of this. Of course, Cull is the item that if you get 100 creep score, it gives you an extra 300 and gold. gold. Yep. yep, it's basically a kill. Certainly is, and as I said, Lex Demonko, they're not a really threatening lane at this stage of the game, so most likely we'll be able to catch, cash in on that. 
see how aggressively they can play it because of course they probably see that item and then go well probably should go ham right yeah i kind of like that point the cull into a fairly non-kill lane without jungle assistance in some ways is probably going to be okay but it also shows you that holy phoenix is committed for the mid game mid to late he's looking for those first couple of items he's not looking to look for kills early on those combat stats on the dorans and he's going to have the sustain from the biscuits in lane so you know, fully committed, but this is the lane we need to watch. Kira just carried CIS to LA, and Naru wants to maybe get some revenge. Oh, he 100% wants revenge. Naru, very proud player. We'll be looking to certainly get a couple of 1v1 kills in this. And I want to go back to the Cogmore. I was speaking to the Latin American team earlier, and they were like, what happened to Oceania? And I was like, I don't know. And they're like, we 100% could not beat them in scrims. They took the same team comp every single time. And the Cogmore just went completely nuts. I spoke to Radia, he was like, yep, yeah, can confirm it. The Cogmore did really well. So we'll get to see if maybe Holy Phoenix, a bit of change of scenery, can pull it off. And of course, if they have been beaten by it over and over again, he probably has a good idea. But Blade Surge is going to be used by Naru to get the, to the wrong side of the lane. <laughs> Stamashke just says, all right, well, um, he's gone. Not really surprised by that. It was always going to be a difficult start for Kira until he's got some wave clear options available and some levels under his belt. Especially with Nari's ability just to dash onto him over and over. One thing I do want to say though is that's a little bit sloppy from Dimash K. He shows the buff that he has. And oh wow. My goodness, the 1v1 from Naru. Kira burning to death, still over 100 health, but that blade surge is so dangerous from this stage. Flash and cleanse. He's got no way to save himself if Naru decides to flash in with an equilibrium strike. So. That's very scary. Oh, this, this, this might be curious saying I'm not used to this. Uh, why am I so low on hit points? Yeah. I've just won every 1v1 you've thrown at me. Yeah, he's not supposed to be able to do that. Why has the map <laughs> changed? It's not snowing anymore. Creeps have more health. Yeah. I can't last hit under turret. Things are going weird. Might be confirming whether or not the Poro explosion will be a thing. <laughs> but I want to go back to Dimashka. If you gank a lane at level 2, you show what buff you have, especially with an Elise on the map, and a very strong early game champion in Rumble if he gets into that overheat area now it's just a free gank top lane for crystal you have to think that his eyes light up when he sees that he knows exactly what side of the map the weaker jungler is on he's not going to be able to get back up there in time should be able to set something up here onto smurf yeah and i wanted to talk to you about this top lane as well thaldron of course on his comfort champion in the rumble but he picked it in to the to the hacker room how does this matchup generally go if you leave it on its own well we've seen this at like iwci so many times yeah uh, he was completely destroying Hecarim's on Rumble. Like, Rumble was the champion pickup in that tournament that took Besiktas to the MSI final. So we'll see whether, uh, sorry, the MSI Invitational and the final of that, but we'll see whether Thaldron can have similar success. It is a rough matchup, honestly, later the game goes, just because Hecarim has a combat summoner and is able to split push relatively effectively and come in for big uh, teleport ganks, but Thaldron should be really comfortable in this. And in the right circumstances, the teleport ganks from that Hecarim Probably more powerful than Thaldron. The one thing Smurf's going to be careful of, he's got no uh, utility summoner outside of that teleport. So teleport flash means that Crystal has a giant kill target on Smurf's back. And pre-6, it should be an easy gankable lane. So the information from Dimashke might allow Crystal to read the map and set up either for a dive or, you know, see how the lane plays itself out. Yeah, and that's what I want to keep hitting on. A lot of the early game is just the information you have. Like, where is the other jungler? What does my first move have to be? Should I counter gank? Should I power farm? We saw that a lot with Mondo's making the wrong decision. And this time around, I just think that maybe he didn't go for the right call. No, not quite getting the auto attack there as we head back into the game. Pause over. And one thing also to recall, Kira actually lost lane very heavily against Southeast Asia, where G4 ran Diana, got like, Got Kira to 0-4, but CIS as a team, their calling was so good it actually pulled it back. So in a matchup like this where Naru has the possibility to get ahead, especially with Crystal hanging in the wings, it's not instant victory, which you just got to keep remembering. Certainly is not the case. And Naru goes aggressive one more time. Equilibrium strikes down. There's the flash. Flashed after him there, but there's the flash body slam. Can Kira survive? Naru so low. They pick up the first blood. Naru so low. He's going to fall. But Crystal still wants more. Body Slam gonna get Dimash K to safety, but that was close. Both junglers pick up the boss. Lane still pushing into Naru, so he should get the better of this if Crystal fe freezes it up, which good guy Crystal certainly is doing that. And all of a sudden, this mid lane going to be even more interesting. I like the fact as well that. 
Crystal was able to hold onto his flash. So not only do they trade, you know, evenly, summon a spell advantage is slightly in favor of the Turkish TCL team. So gonna play out and you can see Holy Phoenix doing relatively well because Dumbledore just buying him all that freedom. Positioning on the front line of Eye of the Storm, knocking up Demonko and Lex and Holy Phoenix, that's it. Mobile turret, I believe, is what Yamato called that comp. Yeah, the turret comp with the rise and the Cogmore that the OPL kept running. This time, Holy Phoenix taking the Cogmore in, and the bonus AD will help out the early game auto attack as Demonko is still looking to get aggressive. Yeah, very low on mana as Holy Phoenix as they're getting pushed all the way off this minion wave. First time we've seen Lex on the Lucian. I'm excited to see how he's going to go as we move forward. You can see Demashka going with the trackers as well, so not leaning towards the side stone. He wants to set up a gang up in the top lane and Thaldrin's side of the fight. Yeah, there's the overheat smurf going down very low. Dimashka gets here, gets the slow on the barrel. The horse still wants more. But Thaldrin is going to make it to safety, but that's flash down. Yeah, so no flash available for both top laners. Of course, smurf just didn't decide to take one this time around. <laughs> Inherent advantage. <laughs> It actually is a big deal because he's about to hit six with Ignite. And if Dimashka wants to push back around, the opportunity to punish is quite high. But first backs, by the way, Lex got the BF Sword, Holy Phoenix on the pickaxe, he's working towards that Rage Blade. Yeah. And it's gonna be a lot of fun. That's spitting AoE. Was it Sit and Spit, Atlas? Oh, oh, top sit lane. And spit. I do like the, the ooze hose as well, but Thaldrin's gonna grab first blood. Oh, sorry, not first blood. Second, third. He gets a kill. Yeah, the he horse is dead. Solo kill the Atlas is, is what you're looking for. And we mentioned the fact that, you know, if he's... He was always pushing in. Crystal in some trouble, maybe? No, Demonko is not going to do anything. He's getting licked. <laughs> so yeah. Thaldrin had the pushing advantage. Time and time again was able to shove him into the turret. That meant that he hit level 6 first. He never got the advantage you were looking for, quick shot, And comes up with a great solo kill. Oh, Kira, of course, back in this lane, but he's down in farm by quite a lot. After that, Raptor went down. Naru stealing it away from Dimashka. I just want to talk about the boots pick up for Thaldrin here. That is such an aggressive buy. That means he wants early penetration. He's not interested in farming up a lane. He just wants to outright bully Smurf around and should be able to allow him to do that. He's already done it, my friend, without them. So this is a scary position. Luckily for Smurf, he's picked up some MR um, in the cowl. So it'll help a touch, a touch. But he's still going to be looking for some support from Dimashka. Maybe Kira if Kira can control this wave. Luckily with the AP, he can keep Naru a little bit further at arm's reach. Yeah, completely agree about the mid lane, but this is kind of why we saw Hecker and Fall out of favor in the top lane, because more and more times you had to go with defensive item builds. Then he just did nothing until like four or five items as Kira drops a Chaos Storm. Oh, okay. There's the ultimate. Just testing to see whether the R button works. It does. <laughs> You've got to remember how to cast a spell for an ultimate, not the well, color. he's been doing so many 1v1s, he doesn't make it to level 6 all that often, as we do have a scuffle in the bottom lane. Holy Phoenix down to about 400. Lex getting the better of that trade. Bulldoze trading back though quite nicely, piercing light, just missing the Void Puppy. Now that is one thing Phoenix is going to be so careful of. If Demonka can get in range to gobble him up, then there is some kill pressure. Holy Phoenix does have his flash in his heal, so there are some tools to get away, but... The threat of the TP, oh. the threat of the cracks. Look at that damage! My goodness. Flame spitter on the smurf there as he's trying to pick up some minions, but Thaldrin's a menace. Certainly is, and all of a sudden Dimashka's up here. Probably, uh, I'm gonna say this is not the gank you are looking for, unless things go really, really well for them. Thaldrin does a lot of damage. Has the ultimate available. The equalizer's there. I highly doubt the style out of team are going to be able to even get this 2v1. Careful there, Demonko gets the lick, doesn't manage to find the stick, and Holy Phoenix spits back. Crystal has started to move up top. The culling is burning through Dumbledore's hits points. This is going to be a battle on two fronts. Dimashka still stuck out. The Naru and Kira, they're trading middle. Yeah, all of the fronts actually is. There's a gank ready in the top lane here. Thaldrin pushed up quite far, and Crystal's waiting for the counter gank. They must know Dimashka is around, but get to head back to base. Harpoon lands. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Holy Phoenix is still low, very low on mana as well. And Demonko, just great help. It's fine. Yeah, Demonko is very tanky at this stage of the game. They're not really looking for a kill. They are 12 CS down, but the Cal should make up for that in the long run. So this lane not going horrible for the Turkish lineup. There's no mana though on Demonchka. Smurf is forced to ult away. No flash and now no ultimate. 
And no ultimate burn by Thaldrin. They can just wait here. That is a creep wave that will eventually hit the turret. Smurf can't really afford to back away, but no, Thaldrin sends Crystal back into his jungle. And Lex actually trading with Holy Phoenix here as he does have the W procced. Lex is actually winning this lane. 15 CS ahead, currently sitting around 200 gold up over Holy Phoenix, but Holy Phoenix is only 30 CS away from getting that bonus gold from the cull. Just look at the damage coming out of Rumble. That's obnoxious. That's and this silly. is what we're talking about. Gragas does have some kill pressure in this lane. Oh, there's the flash body slam. Is Lex able to get some auto attacks off, but he doesn't want to take the turret. Doldrin's here. That equalizer perfectly placed, but Demonko is just going to eat up the Lucian. Dimashke has to get out of here. Body slam's going to do it. Harpoon lands. Doldrin's chasing. He silenced himself. The overheat for the damage, but he's slowed once more. Doldrin must be incredibly annoyed, but does get another Harpoon. That's a well-deserved kill. And that is a huge investment of the Flash Body Slam. Didn't just... Wasn't content to knock him back into the turret. Wanted the first knock-up as well. That gives a second kill over to the top laner of the Turkish lineup. He's got a CS advantage. He doesn't even lose much of his turret. Thaldrin's a man possessed. Got something to prove, Spawn. And you mentioned it in the pre-game, the Turkish squad. They want to pick up wins. Thaldrin is going to turn his attention to Smurf. The teleport's being channeled, and Smurf is just going to get away. But he has to invest the TP just to survive. And that's the TP advantage completely gone. I mean, when that Onslaught of Shadows was back up again, that could have been when Starladder makes a play, but not anymore. And let's take a look at the items that are going to come out of this Turkish lineup. They're definitely going to go for a Haunting guy. Such good mid-game power. Trinity Force. All of a sudden, you look down in the bottom lane. That Gwinso's Rage Blade has been picked up. There are so many one and two item spikes on what is also a good late-game team comp. They're strong right now. I do still think there's more headroom late game for CIS, but it's going to be so difficult to get there. I agreed with you before Hecarim was 20 CS and two kills down. Yeah. That's a problem. If he manages to get in there, I don't think Irelia is going to be a problem. And the threat of Hecarim and Phoenix? But the problem is, that's 30 minutes away, and they're not going to survive till that point. The Turkish squads win seven minutes faster on average because they know how to push the advantage. Yesterday, what Whoa, they did to Brazil. The wow. coming in. A in surprise, not going to be there. Double Doge. Good guy, going to be able to at least get the last couple of ticks of that culling. Holy Phoenix, he has to go home. Well, he can't even do the I wanted to shop anyway, because he just came back to <laughs> yeah. from base, so. Thing is, that lane's going to stay in Lex and Demonko's favor, because Holy Phoenix has to sit down to get a, a, a multitude of auto attacks off, and he can't afford to sit down when Tom Kench is just going to gobble him up with that Devour. Yeah, completely agree with that. Unless they can burn through Tom Kench's health pool with the jungler's assistant. Not really much threat down here. Lex looking to pick up the first turret of the game. The CIS will start to peg it back. Yeah, trying to grab that gold. We're going to get themselves at least even. Still looking at Thaldren. It's going to be a real worry as Naru's going all in. Transcendent Blades are down. Turret's going to fall. Kira is going to survive. That's the Ignite burn on the side of Naru. That's a good thing for Kira, that he's still staying relevant despite the pressure. Naru's had kill threat, he's had gank pressure, and he's only 10 CS up. So Kira's gonna be so responsible for stalling this game out and playing the wave clear bot. And I'm impressed. I mean, Kira's been playing in the 1v1s, fully selfish mode, and he's gone back to, okay, well, I've got to sit back and oh, just Phoenix. try not to die. Because Holy Phoenix wants to complete that cull. You can see Dumbledore just here, but he's very low on hit points, has to flash Crystal. away. There's a living artillery. Crystal's looking for the repel. Gonna get there onto a minion. Demonko, great health, he should be fine. And that's gonna be the cocoon going wide, smelling the end of the game. Yeah, so that's what we said. With Crystal there, there is kill pressure just because of the execute, but in the end, not able to land the cocoon. They walk away safely. Mayo Storm down to the mid lane here as Kira's trying to get at least some of the health off Naru. He just seems to ignore it. Look at the mini map. Dimashke is coming to Rome. He's got access to his ultimate. And throw that barrel up, but Crystal is waiting in the wings. Thaldrin is now jumping in. He gets knocked out of the tower. That might be enough. Smurf is running low on mana. He's rampaging all over Thaldrin, and Thaldrin shrugs it off and walks away. That was kind of a bemused look on Thaldrin's player cam face as well. He was like, I don't think he can kill me. Oh, holy Phoenix. <laughs> oh, dear. Kathy is surprised. Not even going to do any damage to Lex. They can kill Holy Phoenix, though. That was really nicely played there. Didn't even decide to use the summoner spell, did Holy Phoenix. Acknowledged he was dead, just went down without a fight.
Yep, understanding his fate there. Bottom lane, Thaldren is still here. More than content after sort of losing that trade, but without the ultimate smurf. Kill pressure down, also no mana, so I guess and no pressure at all. Basically no tower to speak of either. Thaldren's going for the kill, Smurf may get melted. The tower oh! is hitting Thaldren real hard, and Smurf <laughs> manages to survive. And you saw a look of frustration there, a little bit of a dance spam as well. Thaldren not happy with himself, but he will pick up the turret, and that will continue to be a winning lane for the Turkish region. All right, the cull bonus gold was picked up by Holy Phoenix, but because of the pressure, he's behind a large amount of CS and spawn. Admittedly, the champions were not as expected, so your prediction of Holy Phoenix, Dumble Doge, Ruffle Stomping, Lex and Demonko cannot be valid. I did not think a Janna was coming out. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't seen her in a while. We didn't think the Cog or the Janna was gonna be, considering MF and Morgana were both available. Yeah. And they've both been so good for the Turkish team. But I guess they did again. need some late game investment and Holy Phoenix needs to try fine time to get their summoner heal just for the culling. And you know, as far as, as well as Lex and Demonko have played this lane, they're 400 gold up. So the cull definitely has helped the Cogmore get through the rough stage of the game. And as long as he can find empty wave farm, should still be okay. In saying that, Lex at the moment has a lot of pressure on him now to transition into the top lane, see if he can shut down Thaldren who's got a really nice item build, by the way. He's actually picked up a Rhyalize Crystal Scepter first item, so he's just a nuisance at this stage of the game. That's an AD nerf as well to the Hecarim. If you get hit him with the Flames, but if Crystal might be in trouble, Marshke is going to be wandering over that ward. But yeah, I really think okay. that Lex needs to get himself in the top lane, start trying to deal with this Rumble, shove down some more turrets, whilst he is the stronger AD carry. I like the vision here from CIS, committing to giving Lex and Demonte more tools, to defend and to keep pushed up. So, set themselves up for Dragon. Kira's been jumped on. Yeah, the gravity field's down. Chaos Storm there as well. Kira, more just trying to get rid of Naru. CIS trying to take down this dragon. Gets to half health. You can see there's a lot of pressure, especially when Thaldren has his teleport. But Kira's, Kira's in the mid lane. Kira's playing a 1v1 game. His team wanted to do Dragon. He just dropped the ultimate mid lane. His team's like, well, now we can't do Dragon because there's a Rumble ultimate available and they have to back off the objective. It's just a little bit of miscommunication between what the goal is of the team right now between Kira and everyone else. A dragon looks to be uncontested yet by the CIS. They don't have the numbers. Luckily for CIS, Smurf has had some uncontested time on the top lane, but the Equalizer will thwart any even threats of their tower going lower. Holden is gonna toy with the idea of chasing it. I think if he gets a few Electro Harpoons, there's some very real kill threats. Well, that's a lot of slow if he does manage to hit one of those, especially with that Rylai. You can see Smurf can't really run away. Kira, though, in trouble in the mid lane. There's the explosive cast. Nara just gets delivered a kill. That's exactly not what they wanted. This Crystal's going to take up this turret. I had a Storm's there from Dumbledore, though, and he's going to be fine. That was a comedy of errors. And this is something that is really bad for Lex in particular, because you can see he's in the long lane right now. He has nowhere to farm. He supports trying to go somewhere else to help make plays. And the Cogmore is just going to sit down there. Sure, it's a 30 CS advantage still, but Lex just has nowhere on the map to go because of how badly Smurf is losing out in that top lane. This is scary. There's no real damage outside of the Janna additional, but here comes Demonko. He's caught out. Yeah, the Cocoon is going to land, but he's pretty tanky at this stage. Crystal not so much in that room blade. Thaldren's there, though. I have a feeling if I was the CS region, I'd want to get the heck out, but Smurf says, no, I've got the home guards. I'm going in. Onslaught of Shadows is there. Thaldren might be in trouble. Monsoon comes down, but the focus is on the rumble. There's the culling. Lex just fades away back into the river as Dumbledore They're might be done. in trouble as well. Abyssal Voyage coming in here on the top side. Dodges out of the way of the link. They're jumping underneath this turret. Grey Health there. Demonko just says, all right, I'm just happy to chill. Dumbledore's not exactly going to die. Oh, Lex might Lex be in might. trouble now. He's going to try recall, but he gets oh, caught the by the cocoon. And he flashes as well. Big investment for a mistake play to begin Flash with. Flash and healed. Burnt both of them right there on that play. They will get some pretty good damage onto the mid lane turret. That was the first real proactive move we saw out of the CIS team. It looked great, but then they overcommitted. They reached for Dumbledore. And that guy's just really good at support. And Janna as well, I mean, it's so frustrating. She just moves that little bit too fast. Ring-a-ring-a you know? -a -ring -a Rosie. Naro is going to look for Kira. The stun comes down, throws out the Chaos Storm. No Ignite 
for Naru, but he's gonna look to re-engage. The spooky, spooky goes, so chasing. Damashki's come to help out, and that means Dumbledore has got to back away, and Kira again. Chaos Storm on command every time it's available. Yeah, he, he just keeps getting it forced out because if he doesn't drop it, there's so much kill threat out of this WQ Max. Aurelia, not even about the stun, it's just about getting repetitive dashes in there and making himself a nuisance. There's the equalizer though, Kira in trouble. Ca Gravity Field, sorry, he's gonna be good. And Demarco just says, no, hands off the mid laner, buddy. Taking you home, Kira. <laughs> but that is a lot of the wave clear gone. They're going to have to call Smurf into the mid lane. See whether Turkey can get anything done with the window that Naru keeps giving them. So there's no commitment to the tower yet from Turkey. The minion wave has just made it way in and the support for CIS bought enough time for Kira to make his way back down the lane with those home guard boots. Notice home guard in both top and mid lane. CIS again committed to this long haul. At 20 minutes to be down a thousand gold. I don't think CIS would be too unhappy, but they need to keep this defensive play up. They need to keep stalling and farm until Smurf can be a little more relevant. Especially not after how the mid and top lanes went. Smurf in trouble. He's in a lot of trouble. Equilibrium strike going to slow him down. Double Doge there with the Zephyrs as well as Naru. Not going to be able to chase him after that onslaught of shadows. And Smurf says, oh man, I just can't even walk my own jungle. But he's recalled in a really strange spot. He's not going to check it, so it will be safe. But top lane. He's given over to Naro and Thaldrin looking for a kill bottom, maybe. Oh, Not maybe. Lane. Slow down. <laughs> that harpoon did a lot of damage. That was QEE -E dead. And that's a winning lane versus a winning lane. But Lex won his lane really well. Holy Phoenix is going to get stunned up. That is the gravity field doing a bunch of work. That flash is fantastic from Holy Phoenix, though. Gets him a lot of extra distance. Damashka just held the ultimate a little bit too long. The stun was 100% there. That was Kira's kill to clean up, but very nicely done by Dumbledore to save his AD carry. I wonder if Damashka was trying to get an extra tick or two of Chaos Storm before knocking it back and overthinking it. Smurf, maybe the next target. Naru's about to set his sights, and he gets oh, the crowd, turns his goodness. attention to the Smurf, and walks away. That's so frustrating. He it's put in so much work. He burnt literally three quarters of his <laughs> mana bar on it. Yep. Oh, now he's going to look for a kill as well. Revenge. There is support though. Atlas, it looks like CIS want to get one back. Now, the last two minutes with the kills in the tower have accelerated that gold oh, lead to 3,000. No. And You're Lex, so he's going to get melted. Yeah, there's the equalizer. Thaldrin coming in for more. Harpoon's going to land cocoons there as well. Crystal comes in. Grabs it with the bite as Demonko, Abyssal Voyage, but didn't even bring a friend. <laughs> And I'm going to question a little bit of decision making. You've just got your turret taken. You saw that the jungle was on that side of the map. You've shown your support and top laner up on the top side of the map. And Lex just once again roams onto the side of the map that he knows Thaldrum was just there. As I said, he's getting frustrated because he can't find farm. He was up 40 CS. Now there's only a 10 CS difference because they are giving farm over to Holy Phoenix on the other side of the map. And Lex looks like he doesn't have anywhere to go. He can't, and speaking of Holy Phoenix, now has completed the Blade of the Ruined King. Looks like it is going to be similar to Radius build. The ooze hose may be here. <laughs> the terrifying thing is, thaldrin has got his Leandries. There's a Ghost Blade for Naru, a Blade of the Ruined King for Holy Phoenix. There is no way for CIS to win a fight unless Turkey make a mistake. And that is a scary, scary prospect for CIS. They do have the option to defend some towers with Gragas and Victor, but that's the only safe option they have. And it feels like it's so much later than Turkey normally goes, but it's only 23 minutes in. And they've got so many strong champions at this stage of the game. Trinity Force Yomus on Naru. Oh Cannot underestimate goodness. the burst damage that will come out of that mid lane Aurelia. She's a legitimate assassin right now. And then they've got that consistent threat of the Cogmore being able to shoot out at like three attacks. Both top laners with TP. Smurf is sitting on the home guard, waiting for an opportunity. But there's no real wards to TP in behind Turkey. So, opts to meet the wave in the middle. Oh, Lex dash forward, that's a little bit brave, but will not be punished. Turret goes down in the mid lane. The one thing I will say about the Turkish lineup, not great wave clear. If this ever goes in CIS's favor, it's going to be very hard to defend for the TCL. Yeah, they've sort of got that one off wave clear, don't they? The Transcendent Blades and the Equalizer. They need to get out of a pinch, but you're right, not a whole lot consistently. 
Ah, uh, Boon's come down. Baldrick takes a full culling and a Chaos Storm. Not worse. He's just chilling. That's fine. Leandri's Torment was built up. That's a lot of extra health on that guy. Spooky goes from Double Doge, but they do manage to take down the Dragon. Crystal slowed down. Dimashke gets the flash. There's the barrel. Repel's going to be used, but Crystal flashes afterwards. There's the Monsoon. Now remember, Kira. there's no Chaos Storm. They're going to turn their attention to Naru. Here comes Smurf the teleport. has still not joined the fight. Demonko, he what? delivers himself to the waiting hands of the Turkish squad. Naru is going to be on the sidelines. Smurf throws that down ultimate. the onslaught of shadows. Double Doge is in trouble, but Dimashka gets killed. Baldrin looking for more here as Smurf's trying to find Holy Phoenix, but does he really want it? The turret that is the Void Puppy decimates the CIS and Lex has to limp away. And they just one at a time dive in, try and take out the Cogmore. There was never really any threat. Naru in the end cleans up the team fight in emphatic fashion and everything went wrong here. Why did they use all of their ultimates chasing Baldrin? The, he had a teleport. This no is what I chaos don't get. storm. No culling. It does not make sense. And because of the lack of firepower, CIS they just get Goomba stomped. They get wiped. They yeah. also give the dragon over. They give the mid lane turret. Everything just falling into Turkey's hands right now. And they're not going anywhere. They're, they're team comp. It's really snowbally. It's not great equal footing late game. But if they get ahead, they can just continue to roll with this. And it's exactly what you said. This is too many threats. Naru has to be dealt with. Doldrin has to be dealt with. And if you leave Holy Phoenix alone ever, he'll kill everyone. Baldrin's tower is still standing because of how dominant he has been all game long. I think he's sitting on a lot of money as well, relatively. 1,400 gold at this point. And the thing is, Rumble's kind of that champion that if he gets to two items, he does a lot of damage. But my favorite thing about Rumble, ever getting beyond that, he still does lots of damage. We just don't see it very often because you normally put a lot of effort to shut him down. Marke has to now deal with Naru. Explosive cast is going to come out and uh, smurf. Now finds his way to the back line. That's not what you want to be, buddy. Kira's here. Does have the Chaos Storm now. It's Onslaught of Shadows used defensively. There's the Chaos Storm. Monsoon, though, from Double Doge. Saves his team. Scrap Shield's there. Naru, um, not sure about that one. The exhaust comes down. The equalizer's there. Stops any sort of chase. Demonko, do you have enough great health? Hell no, says Holy Phoenix. Kira now has to try and find something, but Holy Phoenix again. Caustic Spittle, not quite enough. Waits for the W. Not gonna oh, have it. Oh, Living Artillery's not gonna be there either. Kira, is he gonna be okay? Flash forward. Oh, it's not enough. Double the Q shot. shield. Oh, and now my. they've been baited. Smurfs here. Naru says, get over here, Kira. Transcendent Blades gets it. But it's a double for the CIS team. And I thought this might happen. Kira, after winning the 1v1 tournament on very low health, they just throw everything at him. They pick up the kill. They lose everything in response, but... Definition Hashtag of worth. worth. Hashtag <laughs> worth. Still a 5,000 gold advantage to the Turkish squad. They're going to shop, come back, and just keep looking to pressure down the lanes. Baron can start to be a threat now because, simply put, CIS cannot contest. And with the Runans, Hurricane picked up for Holy Phoenix. Three item spike. Oh, so much attack speed as well, Trev. It's just ridiculous. They're going to look to gank Doldrin again. Abyssal Void is going to bring at least Demonko in here. He's the only one hanging out as Doldrin's trying to dodge away from something. I'm not sure. Going for the 1v2. I think he knows that he's probably dead. There's the Onslaught of Shadows. Doldrin's going to die. The shutdown comes in. Smurf wants to try and get one back. Is it enough, though? Don't think so. It'll buy some time. But you see how long it took Smurf with the Sheen Phage to do anything. Naru even threatening a dive. Because look at the vision. Look at the vision that yeah, Turkey can exactly. play with in the top half. They can get some control in the next sort of minute once the Aldrin's back up. Teleport will be available as well. And I reckon they're going to go for the Baron Dance. Yeah, it certainly looks to be the next game plan. And Smurf, he has slowly clawed his way back in. 4-2-1 and one credit to the top laner. Spooky. <laughs> Crystal wants something. Well, I'm going to donate that to Lex, I believe. What is Raptor? They got him. So Smurf has actually really dragged himself back into this game, but he's in some trouble. Yeah, Naru chasing after him. There's the Ghost Blade proc, Transcendent Blades there as well. And Equilibrium Strike. Naru's just doing so much damage. The Ignite's there, the shutdown teleport wasn't enough. Naru with all the damage. BF Sword, as well as that Hex Drinker, as well as the rest of his items. CIS have to kill him to get that bounty. 
claim it from the bounty board, share the gold, try to start clawing back. The problem is He's the amount of time now, they're going to have to invest into killing Naru will allow Holy Phoenix and Thaldren to kill everyone on CIS. I so hope this is an Essence Reaver. I've been talking about it so much. <laughs> well, is going to get caught up. The Cocoon lands. Dumbledore not going to find too much. Crystal just won't be deterred. Lands onto Lex for some reason, but... Look at Phoenix. No fear. Come into range, so... Fights are available. Again, replacing the wards, resetting the vision. Turkey can win in, in so many different ways. Keep pushing out. And look, bottom lane, pushing in favor of Turkey towards CIS. Thaldren shoving up top, and they're just going to brute force this in a turret. And turret's already weak enough. You bring three AD carries, the smurf might be a little bit caught. Oh. Carling's going to come out. Naru's taking a lot of damage from that one as he's trying to escape it. Moving artillery to try and clear the wave. TCL looking for an engage opportunity. Crystal at half health. Still just needs to land that cocoon. And I want to go back to Lex's struggles in this game as Holy Phoenix looking to get a grand tip. Equalizer comes down. Everyone's off it though as Demonko just eats Kira. Lex in so much trouble. Naru, that blade surge for a lot of damage. Legendary now is the Aurelia. Just hanging out in front of the Starlight squad. It's just. No, no fear from the Turkish team. Also really quick at the moment with that Yomu's Ghost Blade and Trinity Force, able to get on top of the carries at will and just taking over the team fight. When Smurf has to use his onslaught defensively to stay alive. That tells you the state of the game. TCL continue to siege minions, making their way to the Nehemiah turret. And now, CIS, they're defending. Kira gets jumped on. Kira may need to get swallowed by Zabonko. He's going to get regurgitated in a second, as Smurf is the first victim. Tower is being melted as the TCL press on. Yeah, Dumbledore gets taken down quite low, but that's the turret dead. Inhibitor is going to follow. The Star Ladder have to watch their base get dismantled. And you saw Holy Phoenix's auto attack damage on that turret as well. I mean, I'm a believer. I was always a believer. I don't know <laughs> no, where you guys have been. <laughs> Fan wagon has been relatively empty the entirety of the tournament. Me and Radiant and then no one else. But Lex is down in CS and is 1-4 after a very dominating laning phase. They, TCL really facilitated this top four. They got behind him, they gave him empty lane farm. They knew that they had stronger solos so they could send them anywhere on the map. Lex, oh, special delivery. Oh! Unreal. His Sorry, corpse isn't started. there anymore. Demonko. He, he ate it. He literally he ate it. Actually, does that count as a team kill? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, Master this is Chef just applied to Flex. Anywhere he goes, there's a stronger solo laner waiting for it. That has never oh, been the case for Holy Phoenix. Even with Smurf starting to get ahead in the game, he never outright hunted down the Void Puppy. And now he's like four items. He's completely open to this game. There's your Essence Reaver. Let the smugness flow through you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 40% cooldown reduction. The reason I love that on Aurelia, especially if you go WQ max, is your Q is on such a low cooldown and you completely destroy people in a minion wave. Goldrin just, wow, that was a fast move. Yeah, so much damage. He's got a death cap, boys. Huh, that'll explain it. That's Myron's build. Yep. He is also 4, 2, and 6. Baron's going to be stunned again. TCL, they are daring the Star Ladder squad to engage, saying, come on in. Oh, that got more damage. What the heck? Ludicrous. Dumbledore with the Monsoon. They want to try and pick this one up. Dimashke's in there. Can he get it? He does. Steals away the Baron. Crystal's dead. The Equalizer's down. Dimashke says, all right, I've already got the Baron. See you later, guys. I'm going to the Death Chamber. But Holy Phoenix gets obliterated. Dumbledore so low. Can the CIS team get anything back as Lex has been Yep, devoured and then gets his revenge on his support player as he relentlessly pursues away. Where is the creep wave? It's not coming, so Naru going to have a hard time catching on to Lex. Oh, Kira's in trouble. Not Kira, though. Yep, gets around the corner. Art Blaze is there, but Naru, he's closed the gap. Kira's so dead. Well deserved, Dumbledore. And why did they commit to the Baron fight? They just stole it away. Three people weren't even around the corner. TCL, they're going to grab a first Nexus turret of the game and maybe look to push more. Yeah, well, they're going in on it, Lex. He's burning to death. Transcendent Blade's not going to find him, though, as now Smurf. He's made his way back in, gets exhausted from Dumbledore, but oh, why the storm just in time. The culling, that's going to... He's alive! Oh, not a nail! Saved him, does Dimashke. He's defected. As the Monko Abyssal Voyage right into the mid lane, and Naru able to get out. Soldier, not so lucky.
obviously said something rude to the CIS team. Instead, True Naru Captain was obviously material. really nice to Leave them. no man behind. Theldrin takes the bullet <laughs> for his mid laner. Dives in front. Well, the inevitable has been delayed. CIS defend their base, and in actual fact, very similarly to the first time these teams met in the group stage, it was a comeback team fight from the CIS and allowed them to pick up the win. And you know, Nairo's build, it looks like it's all out aggression. He still has 3,000 health. He's level 18, while two solo laners level 16, and he's just going. Yeah, welcome to the middle of the team, Nairo. Doesn't seem to mind about it, though, as Living Artillery is flying through. Holy Phoenix still squishy, but Smurf looking to try and get on top of him. Demarchia gets eaten, but then destroyed. The Toad gets eaten as well as Lex just this gets... Is a oh, the Pentacle could be here, Naru! Chasing after Smurf and Kira. Equilibrium strike. Also, he Shadow gets still. moved to safety. Chaos Storm. Kira still running. That Riley's Crystal Scepter is doing some work. Goldrin's got a flank here. Kira's dead. But who does he take with him? Oh. Wow! Goldrin, see you guys. That was the theoretical quadra kill, but Smurf is back in base. No Penta this time. I'm almost more disappointed at the Penta than any, the lack of Penta than anything else. But. 15, 1, and 7. If you wanted to send a message that said I was the best mid laner at this tournament, Naru has put a very good case forward. The next Nexus turret is being focused. It's 5 versus 4 as Lex has respawned and he's throwing down the culling under the Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix actually getting taken down quite low as Dimashke tries to find an engagement. The equalizer is put down in the perfect spot. Crystal back up into the air, wants to try and land a Samoko. That's not enough great health, but he is now Smurf. The attention is turned to him. Just runs ring around the Rosie on his turret. He's gonna die. Lex manages to pick up Thaldrin as now Kira finds himself back up. Oh, the inhibitor respawns! That's not gonna be the Nexus! <laughs> and they were so confused. Turkey trying to hit it. Can't even get it. And this now, point of the game is so funny. Oh, oh, leaving artillery. I was gonna say, because the creeps are no longer their friends, as Naru picks up another two. What are the creeps Shut doing? Down They're taking and that'll be the game. Congratulations to Turkey. Pull out the first game in this best of five series. Man, Naru finishing up on 18, 1 and 9. It's not bad. Would have really liked him to die one more time so that it could be mathematically correct. <laughs> the old 18 divided by 2. Yep. <laughs> Just found oh, dope, man. Atlas. Like, it was right there. Your, what goes on in your brain sometimes confuses you don't me. Know, but Trevor. what a performance. <laughs> Thaldrin and Naru absolutely demolished their lanes. Oh, yeah. It was enough to give Holy Phoenix all the protection he needed once the mid-game team fights rolled around, and there was nothing CIS could do. Yeah, there certainly was not, and wow, is that a lot of damage out of Aurelia. He's just done nearly 50,000 damage in a game with pretty much full AD Aurelia in the mid lane, which is scary, because now do you ban it away? Like, what the heck do you do against that? Well, this is Naru with something to prove by the looks of things. I don't think it matters which champion he's on. If he's on anything that has assassination potential, I have a feeling he's coming for you because we saw him yesterday. Even his Ari turret diving, destroying people. And the thing is, if you step back and you look at this performance, this is exactly how Turkey played on days two and three of the group stage. Yesterday, they demolished Brazil in even quicker time. They did seven minutes faster than this, around 28. And it's just, this is how Turkey plays. When they get ahead, they will just tear down everything in front of them. Well, I, I, I honestly want to say that Turkey win the game as quick as their team comp allows them to. Their, their team comp yesterday just spiked earlier. This time around, they had a Cogmore, they had an Aurelia. They did need to get to two or three items to be effective, but they were still playing the game early on incredibly well, with the exception of that bottom lane. Yeah, really, really powerful stuff. But we are going to throw it back to the analyst, analyst desk to break down that game. Woo! What a performance by Naru. Revenge in his eyes and on the rift. <laughs> for sure, for sure. It's like right off the bat, what is CIS going to do coming into the next game? I feel like they need to skip the Morphite ban and put the Aurelia ban in there because what's so interesting about this Aurelia pick, it cuts Kira's picks in half. It is good against every wave clear mid lane in the game and that is what Kira is referring to in every game that he's playing. And not only that, it is also that flex possibility. They picked it on the second rotation. So Elise, Irelia as a combo are pretty much going to win early game 2v2s. And 
we were sat here, uh, Rusty, you, you're basically saying, watch for the level three all in to me, just again and again. As soon as it level two, okay, level three, he's going, he's going. Elise comes along. Yes, it was a two versus two, but surprise, surprise, Irelia, Elise at level three. How do you deal with that? It was a predictable two versus two, though. Dimash K was very smart in being there to try and stop the dive from happening. Of course, the victor, of course, running away from his turret, looking for the Gragas to safety, did find an Elise chasing. So worked out very well for the Turkish side. And my favorite part about that entire thing and having the Aurelio mid lane is that Kira said, yes, I am the best 1v1 mid laner in Snowdown Showdown. This guy just comes <laughs> in as Aurelio. 18 one, nine. And not just after that beginning, even in the late game team fights, he would just go for Kira over and over and over. And it was something that we touched on in the pregame as well. It's not just about getting that advantage in lane, but Naru is so good at opening or making openings rather on the rest of the map for his team. And we have a replay showing that as well. Most def. I feel like this replay that is just going to come up on the screen kind of highlights the strengths of both teams. It starts off with, of course, the CIS lineup trying to commit for this play. We see Victor walking out of base. You see he's far away from the action, but Naro is first in the scene. As soon as we see CIS are going to try to dive, Dumbledore just plays this out wonderfully with his Janna. It's very, very hard to tower dive with Janna, but right now we see the magic happening. Aurelia is moving straight from mid lane while Victor stays there, and of course the Gragas as well. And already we see the play developing. Lex managed to put himself in a very sticky situation, <laughs> and once again, we need to watch what the CAS region is good at. Instantly in the mid lane, they are pushing for the mid turret. So that kind of highlights that the CAS region wants to avoid these battles and just trade objectives while, of course, the Turkish region just wants to fight all the well, time. It's very interesting because that's what uh, we were talking about also pregame. You said they will 100% take the risk of going for a comp that might be better later and, and they can team fight. But in cases like this, which I think might happen, a couple or more games as well, it's absolutely destructive. And I think it's now essential that Dimash K focuses mid lane even more so. The fact that Naru can get so carried away in lane, and he doesn't just win lane and stay in lane and push it. He goes everywhere else. That replay is the perfect example of it. And of course, there might have been a mistake on the E from Lex there. He didn't get over <laughs> the wall, which is why the flash happened. But Naru pushes his advantage. He gets the rest of his team ahead. That Cogmore still did work. I have to give him a lot of credit. I mean, also when you look at uh, the game plan overall. So Irelia mid, hard carrying, th this is gonna sound weird, it doesn't show too much either, because that's like, well, we've used it now, feel free to ban it, because we've got all of these other picks, the Ari, everything else that Naro is comfortable on, and now they just default to something else. They've yeah. got the counter pick, I believe their red side for the next game. They give Naru the better matchup, and suddenly that could just continue to snowball out of control game after game. I feel like the big issue for the CIS region is the fact that they are willing to last pick mid, they always want to wait with the victor and they put Smurf in worse matchups. When Smurf, of course, is put in a good matchup, he's shining and he's doing good things. But the big issue is Kira has a champion pool that is only countered by a few things, and that is, of course, the Aurelia. I'm expecting it to be banned. After that, I just want to see them blind pick the victor, because victor does what victor does no matter what he faces. Lasers the wave. Lasers the wave and then put a good matchup in there in that top lane because we didn't see that much of the best top laner in the tournament in this game, Himato. Of course, he's, <laughs> of course. He's, he's playing Hecarim into Rumble. Already this matchup is very horrible. Hecarim is a full melee champion. Rumble can kite him around if played properly. And Taldrin has showed previously in this tournament that his Rumble is proficient. And you're right, actually. They could have just swapped the Hecarim and the Victor in the, the pick order. Victor, you can just blind pick pretty much into yeah. anything. If you're going to pick the Victor anyway, just do it a little bit earlier, give the top matchup. That better, better setup. Well, we'll see which adaptations come in uh, in the next game. Of course, possibly four games left to go. Before we go to break, I'd like to remind you of our social media challenge of the day. Today, we want you to send in your video of your best Draven impression with the hashtag IWCA challenge at Lowell Oceana. I feel like Yamato would be really good at that. Draven. Yeah. No, no, no. I believe uh, Spawn was the one who had his video posted as oh, well, really? so make sure you check that one out. Pulse, too. Did it? Pulse went up. I wanted to watch it, Pulse but I haven't Draven. had the time. I really want to hear that. Yeah. That wow. is like the biggest mismatch. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. Everything Pulse does is amazing, if you're listening. Uh, in any case, we got to go to a break, but when we come back, it will be game two and see if CIS can pull it back versus Turkey. <laughs> 